Hi guys, so Boris Johnson delivered a speech where he explained how England is moving from the lockdown into a new tiered system. And unfortunately, I don't think it's going to work very well, and I will explain during the video. We now have reason to hope that by spring, community testing and vaccines will combine to end this era of restrictions. But to get there, we must first navigate a hard winter when the burden on our NHS is heaviest and the cold weather favours the virus. The data already suggests that national measures in England have slowed and in some places reversed the growth of new cases. And that's great news. Now, I'll show you what he's talking about. You can see here on this graph, if you do a Google search, you can find the same information. It's quite simple to find. And this is for the United Kingdom. It doesn't actually have data for England alone, but it does have um, information for the UK. Now, if you look here, there was a spike of 33,000 new cases on the 12th of November. But what's more important is the trend is downward. This is a success. It means that the lockdown is working. The lockdown is bringing down new cases. Now, unfortunately, if we look at deaths, but we'll come back to cases in a moment, deaths have been increasing, but there is a two week lag between um, new cases and deaths. So that unfortunately, that those deaths are probably going to continue a little bit more before they decline. But let's go back to cases. It means that um, the, the trend is in the right direction because the lockdown is working. Now, why the hell is Boris Johnson pulling the brake? Why is he turning the car and driving in the opposite direction now? From the 2nd of December, the lockdown will be ended and this new tiered system will be brought in. But the tiered system didn't work before. That's why you had to go into a lockdown. And as more data comes in, we hope and expect to see those trends continue. Together, we have prevented our NHS from being overwhelmed. But those dangers have not gone, gone away. If we ease off now, we risk losing control of this virus all over again. But that's what you're doing. You're easing off. You're creating these new tiered systems, which is not a lockdown. If the lockdown is working, why the hell are you stopping it? If the fire, if the firefighters are doing their job and they're putting out the fire, why would you call them off? Why would you tell them to go and put out a fire in a different building when yours is still on fire? I understand that Boris Johnson is under a lot of pressure here. His pressure is under pressure from businesses to end the lockdown because it's damaging to them. And he's under pressure from his own backbenchers who risk forming a rebellion and removing him from office. Now, I'm not sure how likely that is, but he's probably concerned about it. And the fact that he has to go on his hands and knees to the Labour Party in order to get many of these policies through is not, he's not in a position of strength. Even with, even with an 80 seat majority, he's in a very weak position. Casting aside our hard won gains and forcing us back into a new year national lockdown with all the damage that would mean. The tough measures in our winter plan are the best way to avoid this outcome. All our friends around the world are grappling with the same question of how to keep people safe without retreating into a winter of hibernation. In Italy, there's a nightly curfew. In Germany, hospitality will remain closed until the 20th of December, and in France, until the 20th of January. Across the whole of the UK, measures remain in place to control the virus. Under our winter plan, England will return to a tiered system of local restrictions. Our decisions on which, enter, uh, which area enters which tier are based on public health advice according to five indicators. Cases across all ages, especially the over 60s, the rate by which cases are rising or falling, the percentage of those tested in a local population who have COVID, and the pressure on the NHS. Well, so these are good measures, but why are you ending the lockdown? 
have you reached a position where the numbers of new cases are sufficiently low, where the R number has been reduced sufficiently that you believe, even if, even though we have a high number of new cases, the R number is low enough for us to, to exit this uh, lockdown. Boris Johnson hasn't explained why he's ending the lockdown. He's explaining why, uh, you know, what this new system is going to be. He set this arbitrary date of the 2nd of December, and for I, I can't think of a reason why he would do that, apart from political reasons. We're publishing data packs setting out the reasons behind the decisions in each area. To find out how this affects you, log on to gov.uk, where all the information is available. <laughs> okay, actually, this website crashed today uh, because of so many people logging in, but I assume it's back working again. I'm sorry to confirm that from Wednesday, most of England will be in the top two tiers with the toughest measures. And I know that this will bring a great deal of, of heartache and frustration, especially for our vital hospitality sector, our pubs, our restaurants, our hotels, in so many ways the soul of our communities and which uh, continue to bear a disproportionate share of the burden. I understand the pressures that, look, the longer we stay in lockdown, the more damaging it is to the economy, which has a knock-on effect, as in it's damaging to people's livelihoods, it's damaging to people's mental health, it's damaging to their incomes, it's damaging in so many ways. And look, let me be very clear here, I'm not a fan of lockdowns. Some people on this channel in the comment section have been accusing me of being some sort of fan of lockdowns. No. It shows that it works. If it works, then you need to maintain it until you get the numbers down. Then you need to implement a proper trace and isolate system. The trace and isolate system run by Dido Harding was not working. She was incompetent. She shouldn't have been put there. She was put there because she's a friend of Matt Hancock. That's why it failed. That's why it was necessary to go into another tiered system. That's why it was necessary to go into another lockdown. You know, people did, the ordinary people washed their hands. Most of them wore a mask and they maintained social distancing. They did their job. The problem is the government didn't do their job. Now the people will have to suffer again. I really wish it were otherwise, but if we're going to keep schools open, as we must, then our options in bearing down on the disease are necessarily limited. What we will do is continue taking every possible step to protect jobs and livelihoods across the UK. These tougher tiers strike a balance. They're sufficient to continue driving the virus downwards, but it's important to recognise they're less intrusive than the current national measures. In all tiers, shops, gyms, the leisure sector, hairdressers, other forms of personal care, places of worship will reopen. You will no longer be instructed to stay at home, though you should continue to work from home if you can. Why? Like places of, okay, I understand certain businesses need to re reopen, but places of worship, and it's not because I, you know, of my personal beliefs. But what is the advantage of having places of worship open in dealing with the pandemic? Look, I understand people have jobs, they need to get back to work, um, people's livelihoods are, are, are at risk. But whose fault is this? Whose fault is it that the pandemic has returned? Here in Italy, the, the pan pandemic has returned because the government was incompetent. For the same reason, the pandemic is returning in the UK, because the government is incompetent. The rule of six will once again apply in public outdoor spaces and organised uh, outdoor sport can, can, can begin again. But there's no doubt that the restrictions in all tiers are tough. And I'm sorry about that. While the data is beginning to improve, the virus is still prevalent and the faster we drive it down, the faster we can lift restrictions. And okay, but to where, Boris? Drive it down to where? 
Can you give us a number? Give the people a number. Say, like, why are they so adamant about avoiding transparency here? Say something like, you know, when we get to when we get to zero cases per day, or even if it's not possible to get to zero cases per day, let's say a hundred new cases a day. When we get down to there, then we're going to reopen the economy. We're going to reopen society. Wouldn't that be a better barometer? It would be something that people can see. They can see how close they are getting to. I understand it would make it very difficult for businesses to reopen or whatever, but at least you would understand we're going in the right direction. Boris Johnson seems to be just throwing things against the wall and hoping that they will stick. In the beginning, he hoped, he hoped against not imposing a lockdown, waited, 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 imposed a lockdown. Then it, he waited, wait, he waited, waited, waited. Um, when it came to the the second lockdown, a circuit breaker. Kirstammer asking for a circuit breaker. No, 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 no. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody. We're going to wait, wait, wait. And then the numbers were, of course, increasing. Sage was saying we need to do something. The tiered system wasn't working, so we went into another lockdown. That's what Sage were saying. We need to go into another lockdown. The tiered system was not enough. And now what is Boris Johnson doing? He's ending the thing that's working and going back into the thing that doesn't work. And that's exactly what these new tiers are designed to achieve. While the previous tiers slowed the spread of the virus, they were never quite enough to cut the, R, the, the reproduction rate of the disease. The R wow, now he's saying it. At the time, he was saying, no, no, they're working. They're working perfectly fine. How dare anyone undermine NHS test and trace like Keir Starmer by suggesting that the tiered system isn't working? Keir Starmer had asked many weeks ago, I did a video on it. He asked, how, how do people get out of the tiered system? How do we move from tier, from tier three down to tier two, down to tier one and out? And Boris Johnson couldn't answer it. He's not going to answer how, or he's not going to be asked here, but he's not going to explain how to get out of the tiered system either. ...are down below one and keep it there. So areas did not escape whatever level they were placed in. Our new approach is to reduce, designed to reduce our below one, opening a path for areas to move down the scale as soon as the situation improves. And crucially, we now have the means to accelerate that moment of escape with rapid community testing, allowing anyone carrying the disease, including those without symptoms, to isolate and thereby reducing uh, the R. And the truth is that at least one in three people uh, with COVID have no symptoms at all and may be spreading it, spreading the disease without even knowing that they've got it. The only way to identify them and protect everyone is through mass testing and Liverpool shows what okay testing and <laughs> testing and he, he mentioned it a little just for a moment before and isolating testing tracing and isolating why is Boris Johnson not talking about tracing and isolating so much anymore it seems to have been forgotten testing is very important but testing on its own only tells you how many people are infected. What happens to those people? Shouldn't they be self-isolating? Shouldn't they be tracing, finding out how many people those people came into contact with? Those people are contacted and said, look, you came into contact with somebody and you need to self-isolate. Yes, I know there is an app that does that, but it, it doesn't seem to be working all the time. Even the head of, <laughs> you know, the head of this department, of this initiative, Dido Harding was posting about, you know, when she was supposed to be isolating, when the app wasn't actually working. What can be achieved? In, in, in Liverpool, in the space of two and a half weeks, uh, over 240,000 tests have been conducted. And to... Okay, but is it working, Boris? It doesn't matter if you did a million tests, if you did a hundred million tests. Are they, is it delivering results? Is it reducing the R? Is it reducing the infection rate? But, you know, there's one thing, you can't just say, okay, let's test and that will fix the problem. No, 
they have to work in, in unison with other issue, other uh, tools like a lockdown, like a tiered system perhaps. You have to use testing, tracing, isolating, uh, uh, some type of mechanisms to limit people's movements like with a, a lockdown, you need to encourage people to wear masks. Why the hell isn't Boris Johnson wearing a mask here? Encouraging people to wash their hands, maintain space. All of these things work together. It's not just throw lots of tests out there and that would fix the problem. Together with the effect of the national restrictions, this has helped to reduce the number of cases in Liverpool city region by more than two thirds. So having previously been in tier three, Liverpool City Region and Warrington will now be in Tier 2. This is a success story which we want other parts of the country to replicate. So we'll work with local government, with public health leaders and our fantastic, uh, fantastic armed forces to offer community testing to Tier 3 areas as quickly as possible, opening the way for them to follow Liverpool's example. Now, testing on this scale is untried but in due course if it works where people test negative it may also be possible for families and communities to be released from certain restrictions even if their home area stays in in tier three now there there has been some comments about this being some sort of pass, passport system where you would get a test you would be certified as negative and that would mean that you would be allowed to travel around without any restrictions. Now, how is that going to be checked? You know, how are the police going to check? Do you have your certificate to say that you're, you've tested negative? Would it be an app on your phone? Would it be something that would beep? Oh, I don't know. Like, how are you going to identify people who have tested negative? And is there a possibility that it could be abused? Like, if it's just a sheet of paper that says, you know, you have tested negative um how are the police going to know who has or who hasn't and how are they going to police this are there the resources available but of course of course I'm, I'm speculating on something that we don't have all the details about the allocation of tiers will be reviewed every 14 days starting on the 16th of december so your tier is not your destiny every area has the means of escape and what are they boris johnson continues to say this don't worry you can get out of it but he doesn't explain how the pe people look this is very important people have very little power over their region getting out of a tier individuals have very little power individuals can do their bit hands face and space but apart from that there's very little ordinary people can do. Now, I wish Boris Johnson would explain how a region can get out. Now, he said something about the, uh, the R number, but is it just the R number? Are there other criteria? Is it something that the government will decide on a case-by-case -case basis? And also, there is a problem that, you know, you have one area which could be Tier 1, and its neighbor could be tier three. So are people who are in tier one allowed to enter tier three? Are people from tier three allowed to enter tier one? If there are people who are in tier three, are they allowed to work in tier one and vice versa? I've seen um, a Channel 4 report on this where the boundary is literally across the road. And how is that going to be policed? And I have no doubt that together we can get through this winter, suppress the virus until vaccines come to our aid, and then reclaim, reclaim our lives and all the things that we love. Sorry. Um, I, think it, go ahead, John I think going forward, look, we have this data here. It's, it's working. Why are you going in the direction of taking a risk and allowing the virus to return using mechanisms that you know have been demonstrated to not work? I think going forward, 
you need to abandon these arbitrary dates of like the 2nd of December and focus more on the actual numbers. Have we got the, the spread down to a level that's manageable? It doesn't have to be zero, but it has to be manageable. Where test and trace, a real non-corrupted test and trace will work, implement it, isolate those who, are, uh, who test positive and contact those who have been in contact with those positive cases. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. And also, I'd love to hear in the comment section, what tier are you in or do you believe you're going into? As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.